for, uh, here for a webinar on automation, robotics, and intelligence. I think this is very important. And uh, robotics now actually is taking over almost all kinds of industrial and uh, allied activities. So even in daily life, perhaps it will uh, enter in near future. And so it's a very fascinating area and it is interdisciplinary area. And we have today with us, uh, Professor Devashish Chakraborty, Department of Mining Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. And uh, we will get enlightened from his talk. And uh, we'll also, uh, perhaps we can interact with him and uh, enhance our knowledge. So I'll first of all, I'll request our honorable vice chancellor to inaugurate this program and uh, uh, say a few words about this program. Thank you, sir. Please. Okay. Thank you, Professor Dasgupta. So this is uh, today's topic is very important as it is related to automation and robotics. Uh, in the context that uh, we have recently introduced a center for robotics at our Arangata campus. And uh, you can see that at the at behind of Professor Dasgupta, you can see the picture there. This uh, center has been you know, started uh, last year and um, we, we are uh, trying to uh, build up a good facility for uh, researches and academic programs in robotics and there. So uh, for that reason, it is quite relevant and quite useful to have academic discussions uh, in this particular area to, uh, to make these uh, subjects or make these things more, uh, more you know, this uh, understandable by our students, by our learning communities. And uh, there is immense potential for robotics uh, in the, uh, again in the context of uh, industrial transformation because most of the things uh, already in uh, industries, particularly as industry 4.0 is concerned, is uh, going to uh, take part in an, uh, in an uh, automation mode and automotive mode. And their robotics uh, would be an essential and key features of all these operations. So for this the remote uh, work process, uh, digital transport, you know, this manufacturing systems and industry 4.0, when we are talking about all these things, the center stage is occupied by this main subject, robotics. And we will be seeing uh, different uh, fascinating uh, invention and applications and uh, uh, this entry of uh, different products related to robotics in our, um, in our market, consumer market, as well as industrial market in the near future. Lots of you know, these um, uh, jobs related to drudgery and uh, low end works that will be replaced by robots in the near future. That is maybe that. That is true for agricultural application. That is true for healthcare application, uh, in social sectors also, in the industrial sectors, in any many other areas. We will be seeing uh, this emergence of robots. Um, you know, these uh, subjects like uh, mechatronics, robotics, artificial intelligence, IOTs. That that will be that will be uh, you know this predominating in near future, and therefore. Uh, or this automation, robotics, data. Yesterday we had one uh, webinar on data capture. That is also very important. How to uh, how to use these robots for capturing data at different uh, from different areas where uh, manual intervention is not possible, particularly in industries and other places where the system is hazardous and not accessible by human beings. There is also this data capturing and process automation, understanding the process, quality controls. All these things is possible. Already, these industry uh, robot robotics uh, have been applied for a long time. Particularly, use of robotic hands, robotic collectors, and many things. But maybe uh, there are there will be evolutions of humanoid robots and robots with more uh, you know these uh, features like uh, intelligent robots, smart robots, uh, robots uh, with more you know these biological features. Uh, that that will be that will be this uh, dominating in the future, and. Uh, uh, we have seen in different, you know, these uh, uh, reports and, and different uh, videos, uh, different uh, blogs by published by U.S., Japan, and other countries. We are, we are seeing this emergence of robots uh, that is that is um, that is that is going to you know, this, uh, dominate this entire thing. So, and uh, there will be different implication of it. People are skeptical about this job replacement, but what we believe that it will create a new sets of jobs, uh, particularly, you know, these uh, large numbers of professionals will be required. Who will be handling all these things? This um, 
this uh, knowledge based systems handling of this knowledge based systems then more researches more you know these um, uh, innovations on you know these robotic appliances to make it more effective and useful and intelligent so that that that's why the, the this subject uh, particular this this is of immense importance as far as the career is concerned and uh, uh, many branches of engineering is involved here there are lots of other areas social sciences involved there are areas like you know this um, information sciences involved from so that's why it is an unique uh, it is an unique opportunity for our young aspiring innovative minds for our young students and learners to apply in this area particularly for uh, development of all of, uh, this um, uh, the exquisite and, uh, and and different you know types of efficient robots smart robots for uh, different applications different and for that we can we can um, uh, expect and, we, and and this is also happening that a large number of startups will starts up will emerge and these knowledge based you know applications of engineering for developments of important products like uh, you know these robotics and all these automated automated products that that uh, that uh, that is very crucial and essential for uh, development of our economy uh, to uh, to the level that by which we can we can take, uh, take pride uh, to be in the, the bracket of first world nations or developed country and uh, with this i believe that uh, as already we had some uh, programs on robotics with delhi iit and we are interested to uh, develop an ecosystem uh, with all these uh, learning communities particularly where these researches are going on effectively IIT from IIT Kharagpur, Devashish Chakrabhu, Professor Devashish Chakrabhu, he has joined. So that, that has also, you know, this legacy and research works in robotics and this automation side uh, for a long time. So uh, the, let us uh, try, uh, take this uh, initiative in building up this uh, in, uh, ecosystem for the benefit of a larger section of the students. And then uh, what we can uh, do, uh, maybe we can have some, uh, already we initiated some structural programs, maybe some research endeavors, maybe some project works in this area uh, that can be conceived of and professor dasgupta uh, can take uh, uh, the initiative from the university side for effective interaction with professor chakraborty uh, afterwards how to uh, take uh, take this uh, agenda of our agenda of uh, you know, this uh, setting making these centers more effective more useful uh, further so with this i believe that it will be a great success this today's webinars and uh, Dr. Shoikot Basu recently he uh, awarded uh, his PhD from IIT Kharagpur. So congratulations to him again. And uh, Dr. Dash Gupta is uh, there. He is the uh, director of all these activities. And uh, so the uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate to them for initiating this activity. And this should be more and more more training, more you know these workshops, more webinars in this area using this digital platform, digital platform. Right now, we have no other option but to use this digital forum and platform for sharing our knowledges, for uh, enriching the knowledge level of our learning community. And, uh, and, and this, this may continue for some more times in near future because of this uncertainty prevailing due to this uh, uh, pandemic scenario. So uh, let us take this, uh, take, utilize this time in the best possible way. And, uh, I believe that all these participants here, they can have a, a useful, you know, this uh, this uh, knowledge gathering, gaining or gathering from this deliberation, and uh, kindly uh, discuss uh, all your views, all your opinions through discussion forum. Make it effectively, uh, effectively useful for this discussion forum and front. Because uh, whatever queries and whatever doubts you are having, this is the right time. This is the time, or this is the, the opportunity is right now to make it clear. So with this, thank you all, Professor Chakraborty, Devashish Chakraborty, and all other resource person who have kindly uh, agreed to, uh, to be amongst us and to share their knowledge and opinions and ideas. My sincerest uh, thanks to all of them. And with this, I'd like to conclude and kindly take this session ahead. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. sir. Thank, thank you, you sir. for thank uh, you. your wonderful introduction about this uh, event. And um, uh, the robotics actually in all areas, all industrial as well as commercial areas, I think it is it has become important. And it is very, as our honorable vice chancellor has I mean, explained, that in hazardous situation, it is one of the most sought after, I think, way. And uh, in mining, actually, because mining is a quite unusual kind of environment where people are forced to work. But in that case, 
this robotics will be helping very much. And today we have an expert and, and renowned professor from Kharagpur IIT uh, in mining, uh, from mining engineering department. And uh, we'd like to uh, hear from him exactly how the robotics can play a different kind of role in mining as well as in other related areas. And so I will now request uh, our the owner, uh, Dr. Srikant Basu, who is faculty member of uh, the computer science department of our uh, university to introduce him, although he needs no introduction, but still it's a formality. So I will request Srikant Basu to go ahead with introducing him and then we will have a uh, talk from uh, Professor Chakrabarti. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, our honorable vice chancellor, sir, and uh, Professor Shivoma Dashgupta, sir. Uh, thank you very much for giving me opportunity to speak up on over there. So today, on behalf of our uh, computer science and uh, engineering department of our Mulana Abul Kalamajad University of Technology, we have a privilege to have uh, Professor Devashish Chakravarti, uh, and he will be talking on the important area of uh, automation. Uh, robotics and um, intelligence. Uh, so I am not going to very detail of that one. The automation is a technique, method, or systems of operating or controlling a process by highly automatic means, as by electronic devices reducing reducing human intervention to a minimum. And robotics is a branch of engineering that involves conception, design, manufacture, and operation of robots. And the ability of uh, uh, to perceive or infer information and to retain it as uh, knowledge to be applied towards adaptive behaviors within an environment context is known as intelligence. And today we are fortunate enough that uh, in a visual schedule also we have Professor Dr. Shoikot Moitro, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, and uh, Professor Shibumai Dashgupto, who is a key factor of uh, our uh, uh, robotics lab, our uh, set of excellence lab, and our stalwart and speakers. Uh, Professor Dr. Devashish Chakraborty. Presently, Dr. Devashish Chakraborty is serving as a full professor in the Department of Mining Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. He is also associated with the Advanced Technology Development Center, all uh, as well as in the Automated uh, Ground Vehicle Research Laboratory of the Institute. He completed his studies from IIT Kharagpur. He has done his BTech in 1993 and MTech in 1995, and he obtained his PhD degree as well as in IIT Kharagpur in 2000. Then he went to for the uh, doctoral assignment on codability and distri distributive gear with numerical FE and D engine at the backward for uh, backend for different application in hazardous uh, geo resource industries and safety aspect in automotive industries in Germany. His basic research interest span from rock mechanics, uh, uh, rock mechanics uh, mapping innovative methods in geo resource engineering to make uh, mechanics mapping innovative methods in geo resource engineering to autonomous and intelligent system. He is a member of several professional bodies, IEEE and others. He has completed several research uh, funded projects in the idea of uh, an area of uh, autonomous navigation, image perception, slam, controls, MLDL for different tasks of autonomous vehicular motion and trajectory planning in addition uh, of uh, conducting several high and research oriented projects in the areas of mining engineering. He has worked on the AR, VR, XR application in various industry problems. He has ex extensively worked on different image processing projects using underground terrestrial, airborne, and satellite imaginaries. imageries. Uh, working experience of optical, multi spectral, hyperspectral, and radar imaging system and products makes his expertise unique. Currently, his future research is uh, focused uh, on uh, actual implementation of the theoretical concept of sensor integration, IIoT, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, etc., et to uh, for the practical field prototypes, uh, which is really challenging because many of these concepts are either not explained or beyond the limits of normal textbook. As for example, applied AI research. He has received many awards and scholarship he has successfully guided 15 uh, PhD students till now in different associated fields in his work, uh, which are very, uh, very upcoming areas in the in immediate time. 
he has published more than 70 journal papers and approximately the same number of international conference papers he is on the editorial board of uh, some of the international and, uh, and national uh, prospectus journals he has uh, been in the organizing committee members of several international and national conferences he has a wide disciplinary expertise and work experience of those of this new and innovative approaches for the for solving complex problems of higher scientific and technological focus but this is not at all only but uh, you will experience so many uh, apart from that as well to the audience i can tell you that one after the uh, throughout the uh, seminar you can take uh, properly such that after the seminar there will be a quiz scenario and uh, after the quiz uh, you will get the certificate and uh, we are thankful to our webinar team especially uh, Prey, Manu, Koel ma'am and uh, other every other members and I am uh, extremely thankful to our honorable vice chancellor sir and Shubhamai Dashkutta sir and Shubhamai Dashkutta sir also kind enough to be a moderator in this session so I am uh, welcoming all and I uh, welcome professor Dr. Devashit Chakraborty to present your presentation and with you with your uh, team members kindly you uh, now mic you yours please stage yours okay good evening to all of you uh, good evening to <coughs> professor moitra vice chancellor of macau good evening to professor dasgupta who is the man behind all such initiatives i came to know and good evening to Dr. Sir, a bit loudly, sir, uh, because I think. Okay. Is, so, uh, good evening to yeah. uh, Dr. Uh, Mitro, good evening to Dr. Dasgupta, and good evening to Dr. Basu. Am I audible now? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Before the onset, let me just get you introduced with two of my students who are also sharing, uh, really going to share some of their slides. Uh, I have Mr. Rahul Kranti Kiran. Yeah. Good Rahul evening, everyone. Rahul is an uh, undergraduate, uh, a graduating student of computer science background. And he has extensively worked on various aspects of the autonomous ground vehicle, namely from the computational background perspective. He will be taking the slides through on AI portion of today's presentation and I have Mr. Heit, Heit Shah, you are mute, muted, unmute yourself. Yeah, good evening everyone. Yeah, Heit is also working on the aspects of different motion planning, motion primitives, mechanical and dynamical systems and the integration of different components to come up with an autonomous running system. So we three will be taking you through to all these slides today. And let me start sharing the screen. So, is it uh, viewable at all of your ends? Yeah, it's visible, sir. Okay. So, the topic of today is automation, robotics, and AI. And a lot of uh, things have been already discussed by Professor Moitro, which is very, very relevant in today's world, especially in the era of 2020. 20, anything say 2021 2022 and also i say it, it is t20 so this is 2020 so starting from t20 onwards to probably next 100 years will be an era of you know interaction with your surrounding without touching without invasion without without physical contact where the things which we will be going to discuss which has briefly been told by Professor Moitra are really relevant. 
So, and this becomes more relevant in the era of COVID where we find we will be willing to have less human density in a given either indoor or outdoor spaces, which needs special, uh, special social distancing or new norms to be followed. So I actually willing, uh, am willing to thank Macau University and the uh, official to have given us a time for presenting this. So with this, I start presenting. We have started the discussions from agv.ai research group, which is autonomous ground vehicle for autonomy and intelligence research group. So this is a group which is run for students who are interested in robotics research. This comes under the Center of Excellence in Robotics Research at IIT Kharagpur. And so this is me, Devashi Chakravarti. We have student participants, Ed Shah, who is from the Department of Mining, uh, Mechanical Engineering. And we have Rahul Kranti, who is from the Department of Computer Science. So students in AGV AI Research Group is really a multidisciplinary research group who are working all towards the same goal of making things autonomous. So uh, let me start with the introduction as what do we mean by automation? So if I look at way back in the history, people wanted to have some, um, some processes or some, even if it is very simple uh, step to be done error-free, in an error-free manner. So is it that human do commit errors? Normally, no. But there is a specific phenomenon called fatigue, which is found to. Sir, uh, am I, uh, sir, one minute, sir. So okay. that one screen is, is uh, green color, it is coming in the middle. So if you yeah. restart the presentation once, sir. So it is uh, opting, so I am getting a view from others. So it is a yes, green sir. color, green color, yeah. Graham, so can you tell? Yes. So you kindly restart the presentation, sir. One green color strip is coming. Sir, close the presentation and restart, sir. Yes, sir. So still a strip is there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kindly restart, sir. Now, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. It is okay. Yes, sir. Now it is quite clearly yes, visible, And sir. if the voice should be louder, it will be good, sir. Okay. Ah, yeah. So they are telling somebody is telling that voice is somewhat unclear. Sir. Is... Please, sorry, sir, for the disturbance. Here. No problem. So as I was talking about automation, so we wanted to have things which are to be performed repetitively done in a very error-free manner and as well as keeping the safety or other concerns into account. So automation uh, is a step, is a step where we try to rely more on human type of task or nature of deliverables but by non-human systems. So systems which can, which can assist the performance of the same task equivalently at desired level of standards or standards of quality. So automation has been achieved in various means, including mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, electronic systems, so devices, along with computational backgrounds in combination and complicated systems such as the modern factories or airplanes or ships typically use all these combined techniques. And the benefits of automation include definitely labor saving, saves energy or electricity cost, saves material cost, whereas it also remains eco-friendly, pollution free, a green type of approach, improves safety, quality, accuracy, reliability and precision. So this is supposed to be the main goal of automation. I hear that there have been lots of webinars on industry 4.0 or the new IIoT type of task, but I still had some one slide. So way back in 1784, we can, we can categorize those activities, those activities as industry 1.0 where 
mechanization, uh, steam power, uh, weaving of looms where mainly focus where we tried to use high energy systems. Followed by in 1870, approximately around that, industry 2.0 came in the mass production, mass assembly line, and electrical energy type of uh, utilization were the thoughts. In, in, in 1969, industry 3.0 came in where automation, computers, systems, and electronic components came in a big way for the industrial processes to be, uh, to be more productive while being safe. And in today's world, industry 4.0, we do have, so all industry 1, 2.0, 3.0 .0 are included. Additionally, we have a concept of cyber physical system, which has some components of actual physical system, the functional aspects, as well as some cyber intelligence, which comes into play for the functioning of the complete setup. So internet of things, networks, and additional new algorithms of advanced data analytics comes into it in a big way. So the basic structure of industry 4.0 is, of course, the low-level systems, which are the mechanical, uh, electromechanical systems, which need to work collaboratively. There sits on top of it a layer of sensors, which need to collect the data. And as was rightly pointed out by Professor Dasgupta, that yeah, data is the end thing. If, if and that depends on the type of sensor that we use. Additionally, it, in today's world, we have a concept of spatio-temporal data. So it's not just a data, a stack of data over time varying events is very important to understand the pattern and trend in the process parameters. So we need to understand all these concepts which really are specific, specific to a system. So the data-driven nature of the analytics is very important. Not only we analyze, we stop at analytics, we have a feedback which has to go to talk with these actual physical systems to improve their performance, to improve the production process, to improve the assembly lines, you know, optimization parameters. So all these are the call for the day. So a lot of lot of industries are really using it, and a lot of lot of things have to come, which probably will be discussed all through. And the first thing is yes, sensors and their fusion. So sensor fusion is a combination of sensory data or data derived from. Uh, sir, uh, students are telling that students and uh, other um, viewers are telling that one, sir, they are having some audio issues, sir. If you kindly somewhat louder. Sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. So, sensor fusion is. Uh, am, am I now a little louder? Yes, a bit louder. A bit louder. Uh, sensor fusion, as it says, it's fusing either as 1D or 2D or some point data sources, which can come from various, you know, varied so data capturing devices. And nowadays, they can be located at different geographically different locations. So sensor fusion plays a very particular, you know, basic step for analyzing and collecting the data. The new concept of you know, collecting data, retrieving the data, processing the data has also gone many folds advanced with the incoming of say new processes of data exchange. So which all of us know. So it's something like if I have sensor data one, two, and so n number of sensors, and then they can be fused. So, but the fusion process depends on the type of data that is being captured, which is basically governed by the process who, whose data is getting captured. So it's, it's, it's basically trying to understand the engineering that's going on.
So here comes the importance of the multidisciplinary nature of such data capturing and data fusing processes, which captures the system parameters, which can be actually the key parameters of any system, any process, whose representation can be in different forms. So previously we used to have various modes of say representing or uh, descript describing the mathematical nature of a system. The most widely system of our model is the Kripke structure, which is even now used. So we can add some temporal logic or even some uh, uh, spatio-temporal logic onto the description of the system in order to you know, interpret the data or these key parameters, which can be converted to different action parameters or action functions based on the specific interpretation of the data captured. So it's something like uh, in present day, we have in India, say two, three weeks back, or if, if I recall, we, have, we were in a very, very good situation as far as COVID, but suddenly in last two, three weeks, everything has changed. So there was a disruption in the, in the estimation of the histogram of COVID infected people. So based on that, there are, there are various social and other administrative restrictions. So we, we have to take actions based on various situations. So just infusing the data and then taking a unif trying to take a uniform decision is not the call for the day. So which will be based on various analytics and AI processes which will be taken by Rahul. The other thing is the internet of, other important aspect is the internet of things. IOT, which, which presently is also uh, you know, used for various industrial purposes. In that case, we say it is IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things. So Internet of Things is a system of integrated computing device, devices, mechanical aspects, as well as digital machines provided with unique identifiers, which as a whole has the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring human to human or human to computer interactions. And this data may be made available online through the use of newer technologies of cloud or edge or fog or other based computing systems for optimizing the process parameters. So previously, this was a very tough challenge, how to take the data to the analyzers on almost, if not real time, but almost real time with very minimal time lag. So applications of IIoT has risen enormously, which we can see which probably is being used in many aspects of life, starting from online shopping, wearable technologies or devices, smartphones, vehicles, and home instrumentation or home augmentation, home appliances, musics, personal computers, analytics, and in-flight services. So uh, to, on a lighter mode, there, are, there, are, there were some people who said with the, uh, with the you know, uh, use of smartphones, we have, we have seen the death of so many devices which were earlier existing. So people are trying to you know, use smartphones in almost replacing many things, which is because of the availability of the technology, which is, which is based on the use of advanced hardware, advanced processing, and advanced analytics which is made available to all of us in the present day. So there's a small video which I thought I should share. So we have taken it from YouTube. When everything becomes linked with everything else, matter becomes mind and the possibilities become endless. Imagine 50 billion IoT connected devices right now.
सर साउंड इज नॉट ऑडिबल सर नो सर नो साउंड and let it be there i'm endless imagine 50 billion iot connected devices by 2020 is it audible now yes sir imagine the economic impact of these connected machines 4 to 11 trillion dollars per year by 2025 wearable devices environmental sensors agricultural machinery components in a vehicle or devices in homes can all be connected to deliver insights and drive transformation so imagine if you had smart devices in your home your car your workplace or even on yourself the world becomes alive that's internet of things the internet of things is making everyday objects into data factories when internet of things along with big data meets artificial intelligence this interface will become enlivened with intelligence and a new world will take birth which will increasingly talk back to us imagine the kind of world that it would be imagine the revolution that will usher in the way we see the world the external world will become the extension of our mind like an extension of our thoughts imagine a world that is responsive a world that is optimized for human creativity a world that is intelligent The Internet of Things is a breeding ground for new AI-driven solutions and experiences, from self-driving cars to intelligent homes to health. Welcome to the world. Okay, so that was a brief about the Internet of Things, the usage of Internet, Internet of Things with the new advanced techniques of data. interpretation ml ai and other aspects and you you can see that this is being done with the help of uh, robotics or some system which behaves almost like human and in terms of its decision making but a machine in terms of its functioning so probably some of you might have seen the movie called the battle angel alita and that's uh, that's a real scenario of what may happen in future where we have the cyborg which behaves almost like human being but which has the agility and flexibility like a machine and based on the ai based it actually it learns from lfd learn learning from demonstration so that technique has been used to generate all the sequence of you know scenes in alita so um, there are lots of such stories uh, such cases which people are thinking of today which were un unthinkable or unimaginable even few years back so with this i will be asking uh, my student hate to take you through the robotics slide hey, are you there yes so, hey, you so i hope i am audible uh, hi everyone let yes, me know sir. if i'm not audible yeah hey you are audible yeah thank you sir so i'll take you through uh, some of the robotics slide uh, which will show the uh, importance of robotics uh, its various applications and uh, what are the different modules involved in robotics Uh, so starting with the introduction to robotics uh, robotics is an interdisciplinary area of research which encompasses a wide area of research fields and technologies uh, nowadays the widespread interest in robotics can be attributed to its potential of solving a large number of current problems the innovation that goes into the development of each robot and 
satisfaction of seeing uh, your robot working successfully uh, it solves numerous problems like uh, which uh, professor said previously like labor shortage and making the uh, manufacturing units smarter uh, the primary areas of uh, robotics research are in the fields of uh, software and artificial intelligence mechanical aer and aerospace engineering controls and embedded systems etc and the end goal of the robot ensures uh, human safety and makes our life easier so uh, here are various types of robots uh, i hope everyone has uh, used or at least seen some of the type of robots in your uh, daily life so uh, these are some of the robots uh, first one is the mobile or the or the wheeled robots which is a very basic uh, robot uh, other are the humanoid robots and the legged robots uh, uh, legged robots are most specifically designed to traverse the rough terrain and their specific applications are widely in rescue operations and inspection in industries uh, next slide sir a uh, few more are industrial robots uh, aerial robots and flexible robots so uh, everyone might have you uh, seen a drone which are nowadays very popular uh, especially for photography and nowadays it is very popular for locust control in various states like rajasthan uh, maharashtra and madhya pradesh uh, the industrial robots are now used in almost every industries now uh, this one is an example uh, used in the automotive uh, automobile industry and flexible robots are uh, robots that can uh, change their shape during their function which are which are specific applications in medical robotics and some of their examples are like snake robots or any other bio inspired robots next slide sir Uh, oh, sorry, uh, aerial robots are also being used in concepts of uh, research for coordination robotics, which where lots of coordination or coordinated work are being done by the aerial and ground vehicles. And flexible robots, they come under reconfigurable robots also, which can be, which have lots of future use and lots of research interest. Yeah. Yeah, so aerial robots are, are used along with the mobile robots to map a specific environment, uh, which Sir told uh, are the coordination robotics. Especially they're used in mines to where uh, humans cannot reach. Uh, next type of robots are uh, social robots. Uh, social robots are autonomous uh, robots which uh, behaves like a human and interacts with human. Other are rescue robots, medical robots, and military robots. so military robots are nowadays used on our uh, borders especially where uh, to save the lives of soldiers uh, there are various applications that they can detect mines and can uh, defuse the bombs as well you must have seen uh, some drdo robots as well hmm. so rescue robots are actually Sir. used in rescue and disaster operations also and we have seen usage of these in geo hazardous conditions and also at certain places where it's inaccessible and medical robots were earlier just being used for medical medical purposes and present day because of the covid scenario lots of new medical robots are being thought of which can be used for patients Yeah, recently, uh, some of the uh, robots, like uh, medical robots, were used in hospitals to uh, reach the patients and uh, give the medicines and food to them. So to to avoid the transmission of COVID nineteen in such hospitals. Uh, next, uh, next set of robots are agriculture robots, uh, education robots, entertainment, and co robots. Uh, agriculture robots are. Uh, Uh, are gaining the momentum in india as well now due to many specific reasons like uh, labor shortage in agriculture in the villages very few labor, very few farmers are available which are of less age nowadays and there are specific uh, disadvantages of farmers spraying pesticide in their uh, farms like it is very harmful for their life and in maharashtra only there were around like 8000 deaths last year due to 
pesticide so nowadays robots are taking over the job of them and saving the lives of farmer and especially their application is for a precision farming where they uh, reduce the use of pesticides and uh, which uh, reduces their impact on environment as well other are educational robots and entertainment robots there are various research going on uh, in the uh, field of education robots which shows that it improves the learning of students as compared to human teacher and yes and next slide so in the next few slides i will take you through uh, uh, various modules of robotics uh, so first one is the localization and mapping uh, it is uh, simply where am i so the robot needs to know where exactly it is uh, its re relative position in the given environment uh, so for an example if you are traveling uh, from your home to your office or your college uh, at every specific moment uh, you must be knowing that where you are currently uh, you do through, through uh, your eyes you see the relative uh, the environment around you you uh, identify the shops near you and you can localize yourself exactly where are you so same does the robot uh, so this is done using sensor fusions from uh, sensor fusion of data from uh, various sensors like I, imu wheel encoders camera lidar radar radar etc so wheel encoders give the specific velocities of the wheel uh, it is similar to speedometers which are uh, available in the cars and imu gives uh, the acceleration and the rotational velocity of the robot next slide sir so we can do it to full screen uh, yeah so this is a map of iit kharagpur uh, made using a 3d lidar and using this map app algorithms sir it will be better sir if the sound is much uh, bit louder sir sound is a problem okay so uh, the video doesn't have a sound in this video you want to show this also hey this is the, the next one sir map is it coming yes this is the 3d map of our iit kharagpur's main gate main building main academic building so this was done way back in 2006 and why we are displaying it is to show you that with very less number of data points we could have come up with such a dense cloud point cloud at places where the objects are so the same kind of concept can be used for mapping 3d mapping of a world space or the surrounding all these so this map is uh, basically now used uh, for our uh, autonomous a shuttle or autonomous car and robot which we run in our campus so uh, given uh, the map we can localize ourselves uh, where the robot is in our campus is it is it okay now it yes sir hmm. you can talk about the color coding based on the error mapping which is available which is visible so it's actually wherever there are less errors it's mapped with green and other colors but wherever more data points are there they are colored in a different manner so various types of analytics is involved in the preparation of this map
okay the red one uh, represents the more covariance in the position and of, and the data position of data points in the map and the green ones have relatively low covariance next slide next slide yes. uh, this was a photo of uh, our academy main academic building at iit kharagpur it can you detail in a bit louder so it's uh, some uh, somebody is telling still uh, uh, audio is a problem yeah so so it also if somewhat louder yeah Hey, are you there? there? Yes. Can you hear now? Hello, louder, louder. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. So uh, uh, the second module is the perception module. Uh, this is basically where is everyone else. So uh, this is done using uh, various cameras like monocular camera, stereo camera, and lidar. Uh, stereo cameras are basically a set of two cameras, uh, which functions similar to uh, a human eyes, like we have two eyes. Uh, due to which we can sense depth in what we see. Uh, this is uh, and for example, if you go and if you're traveling, uh, you can know where exactly all the uh, components are on the road, like uh, trees, other obstacles, like other vehicles, other pedestrians, buildings. Through your two eyes, we can sense the depth, how much far they are, and this is useful for you to navigate through it through the road. And decide how to plan your path and uh, reach your destination. So next slide. You can talk more about some path planning thing. Uh, it's there. Okay. Next, next slide. slide. So uh, this is an example uh, done in uh, our lab. So uh, this is a photo. Uh, after getting. Uh, perception module on it, we can uh, identify what is the drivable region, which is uh, uh, color coded by green. Next slide, sir. So this is the area where we can drive and we can actually take our car into. And uh, then we have identified the lanes uh, into which the uh, car needs to be. The white color. Uh, are the lanes marked from the image? Next slide, sir. And uh, here it is. It is uh, uh, identifying what other obstacles, like other uh, cars, are on the road. Next slide, sir. Uh, and this is finally a video by uh, some of our seniors, which worked uh, last year and published a paper in a. Uh, a uh, very good conference. But it does. As you can see, it is detecting the lanes on the road. Yeah, it tries to detect the predict the lanes on the road from the captured data, and it works on locations where probably the lane uh, lane linings are not. That prominent, so that uh, the driving doesn't stop there, and it's also able to follow or track the lane in case of you know lane separations or dividers. So that's that's based on the orientation and positioning of the vehicle. It tries to see whether it is in the particular lane or not. Here you can see. So this was run on a level PT data set where the lanes were demarcated and very well labeled. So now you can see he has changed the lane and then it's being tracked. Sir, uh, everybody still they are telling regarding the voice quality, sir. If it is possible to hear maybe headphone uh, name. <laughs> Your mouth or something. Mm. Okay, let us see. Hey, yeah. If you can remove the headphone, it will be better, sir. Yeah, so if you can. Okay, let me see. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is more. 
डेस्टिनेशन सो this is a image how it uh, of a simple path uh, where it avoids all the obstacles and basically motion planning is divided into two components which is global planning and local planning so uh, when you once start your journey from your home to your college or your office you have one uh, global path in your head like which road to take where, where to take the turns and which streets to do you need to navigate then as you uh, as, as you follow the road you see various obstacles on it and then you uh, change your path a bit to avoid the obstacles and you react as per the dynamic obstacles uh, you face on the road so that is basically the local planner and then the final module is the control module which is the actual uh, hardware module which controls the acceleration or the steering angle of the car uh, next slide sir so this is a uh, work done by our uh, team uh, on simulation uh, you can see the car uh, planning a path and then con and controlling and finally tracking it and uh, achieving the path there is a small stop sign over there so it stop it detects the stop sign and it stops there uh, this is an example of uh, path planning and controls for a parking problem on the left side you can see the, uh, the green line which is the path planned for the robot and how it tracks then and the right side of the screen uh, uh, it is done, this is a gazebo simulator where we have loaded the plugins of uh, a real car and which have all the sensors present in it on the left side you can see uh, some black dots over there so that was the uh, lidar detecting the obstacles over there uh, the black color uh, black color means that uh, it is a uh, high cost and uh, you cannot navigate through that Okay. and finally the car is parked in between the two cars so this was done by sohan sohan simulator okay yes sir it has again gone out of the presentation mode mm, okay okay so with this i think hit you thank you very much for taking through all these small small portions of autonomous components of driverless car and initially also about the applications of uh, robotics next portion of the talk of today's talk is about the main challenges which now are being solved with the help of ai Uh, the different components of ai and how they are to be used what are the basic differences we will listen from rahul rahul are you there uh yes sir if i module i will start i uh, you start uh so now we'll just have a brief introduction to artificial intelligence because it's it's a huge field and uh, we'll basically be discussing what's more popular and more commonly used and what are the active fields of research uh, so i'll start 
So artificial intelligence, which is also called machine intelligence, it is the intelligence for machines, like obviously, and it is contrasted to the natural intelligence, which is usually us. So a device with AI capabilities is one that can uh, perceive its environment and uh, base its uh, output or actions on the results of this perception. Uh, more commonly, though, the term AI is associated with uh, technology that hasn't been invented yet. Uh, that's another way of saying that it's a buzzword. Uh, so some examples that I took from the web include machines like uh, optical character recognition. So this is basically what our cam scanner and uh, Adobe scan and all those do. So in the earlier days, this used to be what we call AI, but now we know exactly how it works. So it's no longer classified as AI. So in the subsequent slides, we uh, again, yeah, uh, I'll discuss what is currently known as AI. Uh, so next slide, please. Yes. So what we'll be discussing is what are the most uh, popular category of AI algorithms, which is uh, the machine learning algorithms. Voice recognition and understanding, NLP, computer vision, robotics, motion planning, optimizations, and knowledge capture are among the few applications of AI and also can be called as the subclasses of AI. There are various deterministic approaches to solve these problems as well, but AI-based solutions, which are powered by technologies like learning algorithms, are gaining popularity, mainly crediting to the improvements in these technologies, the easy availability of data, and the advancements in the field of hardware computation devices. Additionally, various companies and startups have developed APIs, uh, which are basically easy ways of implement, implementing these algorithms. And there are other people who have implemented the algorithms and hosted them in open source platforms like GitHub and GitLab. And we can easily modify these algorithms with the help of these APIs. Now, machine learning algorithms can be broadly categorized into three paradigms supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning algorithms. Well, the later can be called as supervised, but it is different in one key aspect. And uh, I'll explain to that when we come to that slide. So next slide, please. Supervised learning is sort of the most popular category of machine learning algorithms. Uh, in supervised learning, it comprises of a model that infers or is uh, trained, which is a more colloquially preferred term, from an input data set and its outputs are based on that input data. Uh, some elementary supervised learning algorithms include decision trees, which are exactly what they sound like. Based on the input data, a tree is created. Uh, I'll just explain what decision trees are, that is. So for example, if I want to buy a house and I want to use a decision tree to make a decision, I basically collect data, which is like the price how near it is to uh, the nearest supermarket or how close it is to the airport and the size of the house and the neighbor, like the number of houses in the neighborhood, etc. Now I, this is the house that I want to take a decision, whether I have to buy it or not. For this decision, I also collect a lot of data, which is a large number of houses for which I have the same kind of uh, information or features. So for all of these houses, which are in my data set, I have their price, their size, the closeness to the supermarket and the closest to the airport, etc. An example decision tree would look something like if the price of my house is greater than the average price of all the houses in my data set, then I will not buy it. And if it is less than it, then I will consider other factors like the next factor I consider should be size of the house. So you can see that this will form sort of a tree where there's yes, no, yes, no. And uh, that is exactly what a very basic implementation of a decision tree would look like. Another supervised learning algorithm is SVM, which is basically like finding a bisecting hyperplane. Okay. So, and that is a lot of terms. Some of you might be understanding it. And uh, for those who are not, it's basically like, uh, you have on a straight line, you have points and you want to find a point which would categorize these points. For example, if I am discussing something as a person is overweight or not. And anything greater than hundred is my overweight and anything less is not, then this hundred would be what I would call my bisecting hyperplane. So obviously the data, which we have is will not be like this, uh, nicely uh, put. That's why we need algorithms like SVM. 
now when you go into more complicated supervised learning uh, algorithms you get things like convolution neural neural networks which are basically like this decision taking in a very complicated manner and you can uh, use and one of the most popular approaches of supervised learning is in image detection or uh, classification we'll show some examples of those soon and uh, yeah and some more complicated one are that are used in text and speech recognition which are called as recurrent neural networks and that is again it is supervised because we need to feed it a lot of data and then we when we have a new uh, new information like and we want to know what it is then we can get an output of the the rn so that supervised learning uh, next slide please sir and the next paradigm is the set of unsupervised learning algorithms and unsupervised learning algorithm attempts at finding patterns in unlabeled data so in supervised learning we had data in which we knew whether a point was in my class or not in my class but in supervised we don't have that so we have to find patterns by default so, so we have a large at the, yeah so I'll, uh, we have a large number of data points and we don't know what category they belong to and uh, from this again depending on what we want and how we design the algorithm we can get any number of categories that base uh, that are based on our requirement so clustering algorithms are the most popular examples of unsupervised learning one example is the claim kimis clustering uh, algorithm now you can imagine an image which is completely white and on that there is a black dot and when i say dot it's a substantial size dot so basically we have to now categorize that categorize it as white and black or something like this is the major color and this is the minor color in that picture that is when kimis clustering takes over now we don't know what a major or minor color is there is no such definition that white is major and black is minor but we just have to find it that something is major or minor uh, next slide please sir and uh, finally like the third and the most active paradigm if i may say is uh, reinforcement learning in rl there is an agent and an environment basically the agent is given a task that it has to achieve while interacting with the environment we also define something called as observation which is basically every possible combination of agent and environment rl differs from supervised learning because there is a set goal and no explicit input and output and we are not exactly concerned with what the agent does in intermediate steps it's because we want to obtain a balance between exploration that is our finding out new states and exploitation that is if you find a state which is good i mean um, it is preferable then it should uh, basically continue using that state it's basically like learning from our mistakes that is exactly what action and rewards signify an agent takes an action and the environment gives it a reward in the end we only specify the end goal the common applications of rl are in the development of humanoid robots and uh, like for example walking robots or football playing robots and uh, you can say uh, you might have seen the example of alpha go de defeating the world champion in Al uh, like who uh, sorry i forgot the name but uh, yeah it, it's it was in the news and if there is a helicopter like let's just assume a talk helicopter for now and it needs to take off in reverse direction then all such feats are achieved by using uh, reinforcement learning this and i'll just reiterate this is one of the most active fields in machine learning in recent times uh, next slide sir these are like just some of the more ba uh, basic applications of machine learning and most of these are supervised learning algorithms and these are also the fields in which most progress has been done and yet there is a scope for lot more progress uh, next slide sir so this is a, this is a video of the humanoid robots that is learning to walk based and this is an rl algorithm
can see that this is already a fairly advanced stage of the algorithm. When the setup starts, it basically cannot even stand up, and now it's actually doing feeds. There are artificial sensors given to it so that it can actually get the observations. This is a video of another. This is a video of a supervised learning algorithm in which a lot of data is fed uh, fed to the model, and it is trained to detect objects and to basically classify them as car, person, traffic light, and many more categories. This is another example of an RL algorithm. Uh, before we play this, I want you to I want you guys to know something that while in the previous slide you can you saw that the video was pretty good and there was a lot of accurate classification of the objects. It is not the uh, you know instances where the classification was correct that we need to improve because they were correct. It is one of all those instances in which the corners were missed or the object was classified incorrectly. Or something in plain sight was missed. That are the scopes for our improvement and the fields of research. And in this uh, slide, basically, this is the game Pac-Man, and uh, I guess most of you guys have played this game. And uh, here, an RL has been taught how to play Pac-Man. You know that the in the end, the goal of this game is to eat all of those uh, little balls and not be eaten by the uh, not be eaten by those monsters. While having a high score is also important, uh, we must know that it should not assume that any one particular score is the highest score, because we don't exactly tell it that uh, you know can, uh, that that is the like there is a high, set high score. That information is not given, so it has to maximize its score in minimum time. Here, each training run from the time the uh, Pac-Man starts to the time Pac-Man dies is called an episode. So it takes it took five thousand tries to reach this level. Uh, thank you. I, I, that was all for uh, the AI section of the presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Rahul, for Rahul and Heath for taking us through the robotics, the SLAM path planning and localization algorithms and the AI based concepts. So now I can just come back to what the things are being done in AGV AI lab. So it all started with what Professor Dasgupta mentioned, and also Professor Maitra told that 
uh, I, although I am from mining engineering, so I, I am here, so probably the expectation was that I should speak more on uh, use of bees in mining, but we kept it in general because our group, which is the Autonomous Ground Vehicle, Autonomy and Intelligence Laboratory of Center of Excellence in Robotic Research, deals with a multidisciplinary uh, group of students working on different aspects of the uh, autonomous systems. So the group is broadly divided into two major components, mechatronics and uh, embedded, which deal with the mechanical design, sensor selection, integration, coordination and controls, embedded systems and the BMS. Whereas the software and artificial intelligence, they mm, work on aspects like perception, mapping, localization, or SLAM, which is the simultaneous localization and mapping, path planning, motion planning, trajectory planning, algorithms, and the AI MLDL applications for uh, you know coming up with the autonomously guided vehicle, ground vehicle. So we in our lab offer research internships to students willing to take up internship tasks only for the academically innovative objectives because these are uh, especially to encourage the young minds. Maybe we do not have funds for these tasks, but the innovations and the tasks which are assigned lead to lots of you know, further research incentives are igniting the brains of the new, new mind to come up with more deep insights into these aspects. Whereas we have a very smooth streamlined approach for uh, getting associated with our lab at master's, PhD and postdoctoral research step. And in the areas of automation, AI and robotics to dedicated and enthusiastic students with excellent academic track records. And exceptional research work is actually awarded with exemplary letters of association, appreciation and recommendation. So interested, interested students can contact me in my emails or mobile. So some list of this being a research lab, we keep on publishing. So a list of publications are here. Some of the most <clears throat> viewed ones are, you know, working on DL based visual odometry, robust lane detections for using multiple features from images, then odometry and the non-intrusive inertial speed sensor design. One new concept was developed and also the mechanical design and implementation. So the components of uh, use of mechanical design and optimizing the aspects of the chassis, the wheel, the casing and other things of the hub motors and other aspects of steering are also encouraged and um, components of our activities. Okay, so to end, I wanted to give you some aspects of ADAS. One of the aspects of ADAS, which is Advanced Driver Assist System. It should be advanced, so, okay. Where we will talk of the level of autonomy, the features of ADAS and summary of some of the sensors used, the ultrasounds, the wide angle cameras and complete setup view and some of the test run outputs. So the level of autonomy, which is in the driverless car is decided by SAE International at level zero, one, two, three, four, five, which we all of us know. So it's the people are probably in level three, four, some of them are planning to, you know, get in level five. The features of ADAS in terms of, you know, functional aspects, uh, traffic light detection, high beam assist, adaptive cruise control, adaptive lane assist, pedestrian detections, active, active collision safety, and night vision assist. So, 
uh, it, it's something like a car which which is completely guided by the data captured from the sensors all around it trying to come up with this awareness of the situation in the traffic where it is moving through so that is being captured and tracked so here's the summary of some of the company level uh, you know usages of different sensors so audi bmw waymo uber toyota cruise renault baidu navia and also tesla is not visible here and this is our car the phev so it's plug in plug out type of hybrid electric vehicle so we will be trying to use say, the lidar no radar camera and ultrasonics with one imu radars may be used at a later point of time so radar sense uh, radar sensors details are not here so some of the tasks that the students do uh, using the ultrasonic sensors they go for optimizing the sensor placements using some genetic algorithm based optimization technique to have the widest field of coverage and those have been also you know plotted from ground observations with respect to its efficiency and the correctness so this is our test vehicle dune buggy which is with our lab and our lab is in the background which has been donated to our lab so some of the electronic or embedded electronics components for data capture from the ultrasound sensors and on the right we have the positioning of the different sensors say 1 2 3 4 in green are the sensors ultrasound and then we have b1 b2 b3 are the control boards where these things are getting captured so data representation is a, in terms of you know its coverage based on some artificially placing the objects or obstacles on different paths or different sides of the uh, vehicle which you can see in terms of the different coverage areas of the green portions then comes the wide angle camera which is used at four locations on the vehicle 1 2 3 4 and the coverage area is approximately 99% and we have the left view the uh, front view right view and rear view of the camera which are integrated so the perception pipeline for the camera data processing is input video feed pre processing of the frames rectifying the frames uh, this is yellow you look only once of it's 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 something like uh, c a, a better version of cnn the convolution neural network which probably raul was telling which is used for object detection and sometimes it has been it's used for modifying to track each of the object detected in terms of estimating the pvt coordinates the position velocity and time coordinates of the obstacles with respect to the vehicle so some sort of kalman filtering and other aspects of different algorithmic ap approaches are used to come up with the bounding boxes and tracking them estimating their positions in a homographic transformations in such the projected objects and accordingly give the feedback to the actual basic sensing device so these are the this is the computer controller which is which is processing the data that is being captured by the four cameras and the feedback is being sent to the car in terms of throttle acceleration steering inputs okay so one of the test runs that was done in our campus okay so video says the network is really slow uh, i think i should drop it
okay so with this we come to the end of uh, the webinar and any all these are some of the references that were used for uh, today's presentation we will be happy to have some of the question answer i have i was trying to go through some of the question answers questions that were being raised and some of you asked for the ESP32 board. Yes, that is uh, doable, but uh, we can answer them each one by one. One of the questions was whether uh, automation leads to automation leads to the unemployment or not. So. Mm, that, that's a very common question which we have to face, but on an apparent uh, gesture, it might turn out to be giving an inferiority to the human employed, but uh, for a given industry. But if you talk of the holistic view, it widens up, it opens up lots of, uh, lots of other opportunities for your uh, so, uh, subsidiary, uh, you know, industries or subsidies or service or MPs. Uh, what cannot be done through AI and robotics? That is, is really a question which we should because now it is. It is really, if you talk of in the days of 1980s, uh, 1990s, people used to think that everything is the evolutionary companies. But they, they were happy to thoughts. So one says everything is possible, but the other says, mm, no, please, please uh, take a free look and then we need to, uh, we need to come up with uh, understanding the advantages and disadvantages. So we cannot say that everything can be done by AI and robotics. It's not true. Then what will be the human doing? So it's, uh, we have to have human intervention at various critical steps. And okay, so what is autonomous robot? Okay, so Robot is something which should assist in terms of its performance, in terms of its standards, as well as in terms of its, uh, in terms of its meeting the criteria or the rule sets. Whereas autonomous robot is supposed to uh, work of its own. At the same time, autonomy is something which is only as of now available for a thinking mind, which, which is only with the probably the most rational being, the human beings. So we try to make a system as intelligent as a human thinker or worker. So uh, autonomous systems are those systems which can almost take decisions of level of intelligence equivalent to human beings. So if you have seen Sophia, uh, she can answer almost at that level. So autonomous systems are really very interesting and very, very challenging. How is the perception of ADAS till date? Uh, oh, precision of ADAS till date. So it's highly precise. It's, uh, it's something like it depends on the data. It depends on the data, the data rate and the collation of the data and the algorithm that you use. So if I use highly precise sensors, I will be able to have very high precision level. So it can be, it can be as high as human perception. And some of the tasks that are being also performed nowadays are mimicking the human driver. So they, they use the bio-inspired system approach to come up with a DAS system. So 
people are using it in various commercial purposes also or in indoor environment also the main trouble of adas is everything should also honor the uh, functioning of adas the same way as the adas device or the system with adas is it possible for autonomous robots to predict landslide in mountain very very good question and at the same time very uh, very very debatable but people say <coughs> autonomous robot so there is a term called resolution so we we talk of mainly four types of resolution one is spatial resolution another is spectral resolution next is radiometric resolution and the third uh, last is the temporal resolution so if you have a temporal resolution of almost milliseconds probably you can you can see the changing faces of the land surface and if you have a very good predictive algorithm you can predict the landslide motion so um mm, you have to meet certain criteria in terms of the sensors in terms of the uh, in terms of the repeat, repeat frequency in terms of the processing and other aspects so um it's it's doable yes it's doable no both so as of now it's very difficult to say yes or no okay so which machine learning algorithm can be used to fake news detection yeah yeah mm, this is also a challenge because lots of fake news is come but then there are some scores which can be used and uh, it mainly depends on mainly not doesn't does not actually depend necessarily on the machine learning algorithm but also depends on the lab availability of the label dot data set so it depends on the again the human intervention who can classify based on the available resources so on a real time it's very difficult to say okay so with these we uh, thank the macout organization for this webinar i pass it on back to dr saikot basu is there anything that i left i took out the qa session and try to reply back yes sir so uh, thank you very much sir for your nice presentation you touch upon the uh, different um, slide with the help of rahul and hit we are thankful to them as well and uh, the presentation of regarding the different sensors different robots and now the new ads principles so what you have discussed as well as the new vehicle what you have designed the iit karo and you have discussed some of the uh, important things how to get into iits because many of our students and somebody's dream to join iit so for them you have already shared the link and uh, uh, somebody is asking still asking uh, that the where you, would you they will get the, your slides or not uh, so can you touch upon that one the, so that is actually show... actually it is getting recorded in youtube no so they can always refer in youtube macout channel and the uh, whole recording will be of this webinar will be there so and within that i think slides got embedded okay yes. so i think what slides they can refer any time so i think i am very much thankful to professor chakraborty because uh, such an elaborative and you know informative uh, presentation and uh, uh, in our institute i macout uh, molan abul kalam azad university of technology last year we started Um, a robotics uh, course that is uh, we started a bsc course uh, that is professional one but it is under undergraduate and ugc course mm -hmm. and um, uh, and we have collaborated with uh, iit delhi so now i will be associated with iit kharagpur as well and we look forward to uh, do lot of research actually and you know robotics is such a field where we can in, i think uh, involve all the university departments and department all the the faculty members that is one advantage and yeah, we are doing so and uh, we uh, and we are getting link to all the universities premier universities and uh, and premier institutions and you know gradually we can build up a course ecosystem 
for robotics and which mm. is, i believe it is very much necessary it is it is so such a diversified field and uh, i think interdisciplinary field where uh, i mean ecosystem development is very very essential because from all angles different angles one have to you know approach and and uh, i think that will be very very beneficial so it will be a great opportunity for us and in near future also we will get associated with professor chakraborty and uh, i myself will be you know uh, uh, taking initiatives and in our uh, institute actually uh, we have uh, dip, uh, several schools and uh, and we have the, uh, this school of engineering science under which this robotics program is also coming center for robotics and we have built up a, uh, i mean reasonably good lab laboratory but that is basically for uh, undergraduate studies uh, but uh, we want to enhance it also with uh, your uh, with the advice of professor chakraborty and uh, uh, stalwarts like them and so i think it's a very great opportunity and we will be associated and I'll, i have a request to all the participants also so this is an opportunity to get associated with corporate iit and uh, one should i think uh, utilize that so we expect that all all the participants also will be involved and later on i will request also professor chakraborty and also i am thankful to rahul and um, uh, nikhit actually he yeah. sir so for um, uh, the, i think explaining the fundamentals as well as certain i mean uh, advanced issues very of robotics very i mean lucidly and uh, that was a very wonderful thing actually so they are um, i believe the faculties in grooming actually they are actually getting groomed so uh, so in near future we are very much hopeful that uh they will be uh, doing very good and uh, they will be contributing to this field of robotics to a, to a great extent and uh, so uh, they also can be associated with us and we will be associated with them also so uh, i request all of the because i believe a lot of faculty members and as well as students of macau and its affiliated colleges are also uh, i think participating in this program so i will request them to get involved with as as well as professor chakraborty and uh, uh, his fac uh, faculty members and his team members and uh, uh, in the, and, and corporate as a whole so i will again go back to dr shoykat basu to uh, have a uh, i think if vice chancellor is available is he available i i, don't, I can't see he on, on the, might on the maybe final. with some other meetings might be okay so um, uh, so i will request dr shoykat basu to uh have a uh, I, th i think you know wonder i think uh, i think uh, put up yeah. thanks or sort of sort, uh, sort of that just 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 and, one uh, moment sir before yeah, please. Uh, yeah. dr basu starts i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to uh, you dr dasutta and also dr moitra and dr basu for this uh, you know initiative and we will be definitely willing to um, get associated and you know to all possible extents to all possible extents and i really am with you i feel you so students should or uh, even those who are willing to who are enthusiasts should come together and this is the time so this is the time when we should come together and you know think of a new future and as you were also telling you have a new center uh and lots of college uh, professors assistant professors are here so for them they if it is uh, if they join so it will be really a good and win win situation for yeah, all yeah, yeah, right right we are we look forward to have even joint research projects also in such activities yeah, yes thank you so, so thank you all please. sir uh, in a vote of thanks i uh, congratulate uh, professor uh, dr devashish chakraborty our honorable vice chancellor and uh, our uh, professor director uh, dr shivoma dasgupta sir and his uh, mane our chakraborty sir students uh, heet and rahul and uh, we have seen that one many students from, from all of the part of the india from starting from jaipur to surat uh, in the eastern part of uh, uh, india to the up garakpur and down karnataka telangana every part and we have seen somebody from uh, uae as well so there is a huge participation from throughout the india as well as outside as well so thank you very much uh, and uh, so there will be a one a small quiz after that one and i am 
I'm thankful for everybody and I'm thankful for our webinar team, especially uh, Prem, we are long time and ahead and from the starting day, starting of the inception, uh, uh, he was there and our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, our Shubhamai, sir, and obviously Professor Chakravarti, sir. And uh, so there will be uh, one uh, quiz and uh, you have to, after the quiz and uh, feedback link, you will be getting certificate after uh, two hours, Prem. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, after two hours, you will be getting the uh, certificate. Yeah. Yes, sir. After attending the quiz, uh, yeah. we will be uh, accessing the quiz and then the certificates will be available to download. So that's from my side, and anybody can tell something. So thank you very much, and good night to everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Professor Chakravarti. Good night. Good night, good night Rahul. Good night, Chai. Good night. Yeah. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Rahul, Kiran, Hit, and uh, Hitsha, both thank you very much for your participation. Yeah. Actually, yeah, Rahul, thank you, thank you for inviting us. Bhatinda. Rahul has joined from Matinda and Hit has oh, joined from Ahmedabad. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> so, both all the uh, eastern part as well as middle part. Also. Good. Thank you very much, everybody. And we are looking forward to starting a good venture of our university yeah. with IIT Kharagpur. I have, uh, so for our vice chancellor also told I have just. Uh, now got PhD from IIT Kharagpur only. Yeah, so I should also science PhD and school of medical. Yeah. Uh, thank so you. So Shain we because we want to because our not only myself, our student as well as our university wants you, mm -hmm. you all and so next opportunities are actually here. So if some faculty member also wants to register.